My beloved child, I need you to listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. The time has come for you to be aware of a deep and troubling reality that surrounds you. There is someone close to you, perhaps within your own family, who harbors feelings of envy and resentment. These emotions have led them to curse you, whether knowingly or unknowingly. This is not something to take lightly, but rather something to address with both spiritual and practical wisdom. The angels I have sent to protect you have been trying to warn you. They are constantly by your side, whispering words of caution, urging you to be vigilant and discerning. This curse is born out of someone's inability to accept the blessings and favor that I have placed upon your life. Instead of rejoicing in your happiness and success, their heart has been twisted by envy. They have allowed darkness to enter their soul, and now they wish to see you fall. But take heart, my child, for I am with you, and no curse can stand against my protection over you. The power of envy and resentment is real, but my love and protection are far greater. I have surrounded you with my angels, and they are ready to fight on your behalf. However, you must do your part as well. This begins with recognizing the signs that I have been showing you, those moments of unease, the sudden feeling of heaviness, or the strange occurrences that seem to follow you. I urge you to turn to me in prayer and ask for discernment. Seek my wisdom to understand who this person is and how you can protect yourself spiritually. Remember, the battle you are facing is not against flesh and blood but against the spiritual forces of evil. This is why it is crucial to stay rooted in my word and to keep your faith strong. Do not let fear take hold of your heart, for fear is a tool of the enemy. Instead, stand firm in the knowledge that I am your refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. You must also guard your heart against bitterness or the desire for revenge. It is easy to feel anger or betrayal when someone close to you has acted out of envy. But remember, I have called you to walk in love, even towards those who seek to harm you. Pray for this person, that their heart may be softened and that they may come to repentance. This does not mean allowing them to continue hurting you, but rather entrusting the situation to me, the ultimate judge and protector. Finally, I want you to take action in the spiritual realm. Surround your home with prayer, declare my promises over your life, and ask the angels to stand guard over you and your loved ones. Use the authority I have given you in my name to break any curse that has been spoken over you. Speak life, not death, and declare my protection over every area of your life. Remember, the power of life and death is in your tongue, so use it to speak my blessings and protection over yourself. If you believe that my angels are protecting you and that no curse can stand against my power, right, I am protected by God's love, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. My child, in these times, discernment is more important than ever. The enemy often disguises himself as an angel of light, making it difficult to see the true nature of those around you. This is why I urge you to seek my guidance in all things. There are people in your life who wear a mask of kindness, but beneath that mask lies envy and malice. This is especially dangerous when it comes from those within your own family, those whom you trust and love. Discernment is a gift I give to my children, a spiritual sensitivity that allows you to see beyond the surface. But this gift must be cultivated through prayer, meditation on my word, and a deep relationship with me. When you are in tune with my spirit, you will begin to notice things you may have previously overlooked. You will feel a check in your spirit when something is not right, a gentle nudge for me to be cautious or to take a different path. 
I encourage you to pay attention to these warnings, to the unease that you may feel in certain situations or around certain people. This is my way of guiding you, of protecting you from harm. Do not dismiss these feelings as mere coincidence, they are my spirit speaking to yours, urging you to be vigilant. The person who has cursed you may be someone you would never suspect, which is why discernment is so crucial. Not everyone who is close to you has your best interests at heart. I also want you to be aware of how this envy can manifest in subtle ways. It may not always be an outright curse or malicious act. Sometimes, it is the small, seemingly insignificant words or actions that can carry the most harm. A negative comment here, a dismissive attitude there, these are all ways the enemy uses to plant seeds of doubt, fear, and insecurity in your heart. But you have the power to uproot these seeds before they take hold, by staying grounded in my truth and rejecting anything that does not align with my word. Pray for discernment daily, my child. Ask me to open your eyes to the truth, to reveal the hidden motives of those around you. But also, ask me to protect your heart, so that you do not become cynical or distrustful of others. I want you to walk in wisdom, but also in love. Discernment is not about living in fear or suspicion, but about navigating your life with my guidance, ensuring that you are surrounded by those who uplift and support you in your journey. If you believe that I will give you the discernment to see the truth and protect your heart, right, God guides my steps and opens my eyes to the truth. My beloved, envy is a powerful force, one that can drive people to act in ways they may never have imagined. It is a poison that corrupts the heart and mind, leading to actions that can cause great harm to others. But you must understand that envy does not have power over you unless you allow it to. I have given you the tools to break the power of envy and any curse that comes from it. The first step in breaking the power of envy is to recognize it for what it is, a manifestation of fear and insecurity. The person who has cursed you is acting out of their own feelings of inadequacy and fear of being overshadowed by your success and happiness. But you must not allow their insecurities to affect you. Stand firm in who you are in me, knowing that I have called you, blessed you, and anointed you for a purpose. No one else's opinion or curse can change that. Next, you must forgive the person who has cursed you. Forgiveness is a powerful weapon against the enemy. When you forgive, you release yourself from the hold that the curse may have over you. Forgiveness does not mean condoning their actions or allowing them to continue hurting you. It means entrusting the situation to me, allowing me to be the judge, and freeing your heart from the burden of anger and bitterness. In forgiving, you are breaking the chain that envy has tried to wrap around your soul. I also want you to actively bless those who curse you. This may seem counterintuitive, but it is a powerful act of faith and obedience. When you bless those who have wronged you, you are declaring that my love and grace are greater than any curse or act of malice. You are choosing to live in the light, refusing to be dragged down by the darkness that envy brings. Speak blessings over your life and the lives of those around you, and watch as my power breaks the curse and brings healing. Prayer is another key in breaking the power of envy. Pray for protection over yourself and your loved ones, asking me to place a hedge of protection around you. Pray for the person who has cursed you, that their heart may be softened and that they may find peace and contentment in me. Your prayers are powerful, and they can bring about transformation not just in your life, but in the lives of those who have wronged you. Finally, remember to surround yourself with my word. The scriptures are your shield and sword in this battle against envy and curses. 
Speak my promises over your life, declare my protection and provision, and let my word be the foundation upon which you stand. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, for you are mine, and I will protect you from all harm. If you believe that I have given you the power to break the chains of envy and walk in freedom, right, I am free in God's love and protected by His grace. My dear child, prayer is your greatest weapon in this battle. It is through prayer that you connect with me, that you invite my power into your life, and that you break the chains of any curse that may have been placed upon you. I urge you to make prayer a central part of your life, especially in times of spiritual warfare. Your prayers are not just words, they are powerful declarations of faith that can move mountains and change circumstances. When you pray, do not pray from a place of fear or desperation, but from a place of authority and confidence. Remember who you are in me, you are my beloved child, and I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Speak my word in your prayers, declare my promises over your life, and stand firm in the knowledge that I am with you. Your prayers can break the power of any curse, no matter how strong it may seem. In addition to praying for yourself, I want you to pray for those who have wronged you. This is not an easy thing to do, but it is a powerful act of love and obedience. When you pray for those who have cursed you, you are not only releasing them from the hold that envy has over them, but you are also freeing yourself from the burden of anger and resentment. Pray that their hearts may be softened, that they may find peace and healing in me, and that they may come to know my love. Blessing others is another powerful tool in this battle. Speak blessings over your life and the lives of those around you. Bless your home, your work, your relationships, and your future. When you bless, you are inviting my presence into every area of your life, and where I am, no curse can stand. Bless those who have cursed you, and watch as my power transforms the situation, bringing light where there was darkness and peace where there was strife. Remember, my child, that you are not alone in this battle. My angels are with you, fighting on your behalf. They are constantly working to protect you, to guide you, and to bring you the victory that I have already secured. Your prayers strengthen them, empowering them to act on your behalf. As you pray, you are not just speaking into the air, you are activating the spiritual forces that I have placed around you. If you believe in the power of prayer and blessings to protect and transform your life, right, my prayers are powerful, and I am blessed by God's love. My beloved child, I have called you to walk in the light, to live a life that reflects my love, grace, and truth. This means not only rejecting the darkness of envy, curses, and resentment but also actively pursuing a life of love, forgiveness, and blessing. As you walk in the light, you become a beacon of my love to those around you, a living testimony of my power to protect and transform lives. Walking in the light means being aware of the spiritual reality that surrounds you. It means recognizing the enemy's attempts to pull you into darkness, but also knowing that my light is far stronger. The darkness cannot overcome the light, and as long as you remain in me, you are protected from all harm. This is not just a spiritual truth but a practical reality that you can live out every day. To walk in the light, you must keep your heart pure. This means letting go of any bitterness, anger, or resentment that may have taken root because of the curses or envy directed at you. I know it is not easy to forgive those who have wronged you, especially when they are close to you, but I ask you to trust me. Trust that I am the ultimate judge, that I see all, and that I will bring justice in my time. Release the burden of unforgiveness to me, and let my peace fill your heart. 
Living in the light also means actively seeking my presence every day. Spend time in prayer, immerse yourself in my word, and surround yourself with others who will encourage you in your walk with me. The more you fill your life with my light, the less room there will be for darkness. Let my love be the driving force behind all that you do, guiding your thoughts, words, and actions. As you walk in the light, you will become a source of light to others. Your life will reflect my glory, and those around you will be drawn to the peace, joy, and love that radiates from you. This is how you defeat the enemy, not just by breaking curses and overcoming envy, but by living a life that is so filled with my light that darkness has no place in it. Let your light shine, my child, and watch as it dispels the darkness around you. If you believe that you are called to walk in the light and reflect God's love to the world, write, I walk in God's light, and His love shines through me. My dear child, above all else, remember this, my love for you is greater than anything you can imagine. It is stronger than any curse, more powerful than any envy, and more enduring than any trial. My love is the foundation of your life, the rock upon which you can stand firm, no matter what comes your way. When you are rooted in my love, nothing can shake you. My love is a protective force that surrounds you at all times. It is the shield that deflects the arrows of the enemy, the refuge you can run to in times of trouble. But my love is also an active force that transforms, heals, and restores. It is my love that empowers you to forgive, to bless, and to walk in the light. My love is not just something you receive, it is something that flows through you, touching everyone around you. As you live in my love, you will begin to see the world differently. You will no longer be bound by fear or resentment, but you will be free to live a life of joy and peace. My love casts out all fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and there is no punishment in my love. Instead, there is only grace, mercy, and the promise of a future filled with hope. Let my love be the lens through which you see the world, and watch as it transforms not just your life, but the lives of those around you. I want you to know that my love is always with you, even in the darkest moments. There will be times when you feel alone, when the weight of the world seems too much to bear. But remember this, I am with you, and my love will never leave you. You are my child, and nothing can separate you from my love, not curses, not envy, not trials, nothing. My love for you is eternal, unchanging, and unwavering. Let my love guide you in all things. When you are unsure of what to do, ask yourself, what would love do? Let love be your guide, your compass, your constant companion. As you live in my love, you will find that life becomes richer, fuller, and more meaningful. You will find that you have the strength to face any challenge, the courage to overcome any obstacle, and the peace to weather any storm. If you believe that God's love is the foundation of your life and that it empowers you to live in peace and joy, write, I am loved by God, and His love guides my life. My beloved child, there is a deep peace that comes when you trust in me, when you place all your fears and anxieties into my hands. Life can be overwhelming, with countless uncertainties weighing on your heart. But know this, I am the Lord your God, and I know every detail of your life. I am aware of every tear you've shed, every worry that keeps you awake at night. Trust that my plan for you is perfect, even when it seems unclear. When you surrender your worries to me, you open the door for my divine intervention to take place in your life. Remember, my timing is not your timing, but it is always the best. There are moments when you may feel frustrated, waiting for answers or solutions, 
but trust that I am working in the background, orchestrating every detail according to my will. Your prayers have not gone unheard, nor have your tears been in vain. Each step you take in faith, each moment you lean on me, brings you closer to the fulfillment of the promises I have made for you. Do not let doubt or impatience take root in your heart, for they are tools of the enemy to derail you from the blessings I have prepared. In those moments when fear and anxiety creep in, I ask you to remember my words, do not be afraid, for I am with you, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. These are not just words, but a powerful truth meant to anchor you in my love. The enemy will try to whisper lies of fear and failure into your mind, but stand firm in the knowledge that I have never left you and I never will. Your trust in me is the foundation upon which I will build great things in your life. There is great power in surrender. By letting go of the need to control every aspect of your life, you allow me to step in and show you my power. It is in your weakness that my strength is made perfect. When you are weary, turn to me, when you are confused, seek my guidance. I have a perfect plan for you, one that will lead you into peace, joy, and fulfillment. Trust that I will guide you every step of the way. Now, I invite you to take a moment and reflect on this. Do you truly trust me with your whole heart? Are you willing to place everything, your hopes, dreams, fears, and failures, in my hands? This act of trust is not a one-time decision but a daily commitment. Every day, remind yourself that I am with you, guiding you through the valleys and the peaks. Together, we will navigate the path ahead and you will see that my plan is far greater than anything you could have imagined. If you believe that I am guiding your steps and working in your life, right, I trust in God's perfect plan for my life. My precious child, today I come to you with a message of warning and protection. There are forces at work in your life that seek to lead you astray, to pull you away from my light and into the shadows of despair and confusion. It is essential that you remain vigilant and aware of the spiritual battle that surrounds you. The enemy is cunning, seeking to sow seeds of doubt, fear, and division in your heart. But do not fear, for I am your protector, your shield in times of trouble. I have placed my angels around you, guarding your steps and warning you of the dangers that lie ahead. Listen carefully to the whispers of my spirit, guiding you away from harm and towards the path of righteousness. There may be individuals in your life who do not have your best interests at heart, who may seek to harm you with their words or actions. Be discerning, my child, and do not allow their negativity to take root in your soul. I am with you, and I will expose those who mean you harm, bringing their intentions to light. It is important to repent and turn away from any sin that may be opening doors to these negative influences. The enemy cannot harm you unless you give him a foothold through sin or disobedience. I ask you to examine your heart, to repent sincerely of any wrongdoing, and to seek my forgiveness. In doing so, you cleanse yourself of any spiritual vulnerability and strengthen your defenses against the attacks of the enemy. Remember, I am a God of mercy and grace, and I am always ready to forgive and restore you. Stay close to me, my child. In these times of trial, it is more important than ever to deepen your relationship with me. Spend time in prayer, immerse yourself in my word, and surround yourself with others who will lift you up in faith. The enemy's greatest weapon is isolation, but together, we will stand strong. You are not alone in this battle, for I am fighting alongside you. As long as you hold fast to my promises and walk in obedience, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
I urge you to be aware of your surroundings and the people you allow into your inner circle. There is wisdom and caution, and discernment is a gift I give to those who seek it. Do not be afraid to distance yourself from those who lead you into temptation or negativity. Instead, seek out relationships that build you up, that encourage you in your walk with me. In doing so, you create an environment where my peace and protection can flourish. If you believe that I am your protector and that I will guide you safely through every trial, right, I am strong and protected by God's love. My child, the battle you are facing is not of flesh and blood but of spiritual forces that seek to disrupt your peace and steal your joy. This is a time of spiritual warfare, where the enemy is working tirelessly to sow seeds of fear, doubt, and confusion in your life. But take heart, for I have already equipped you with everything you need to stand firm against these attacks. You are not alone in this fight, my angels are with you, surrounding you, and fighting on your behalf. Prayer is your greatest weapon in this battle. It is through prayer that you connect with me, drawing strength and wisdom to face each challenge. When you pray, you invite my presence into your life, and where I am, the enemy cannot stand. I urge you to make prayer a daily practice, not just in times of crisis but as a way of life. Through prayer, you build a spiritual fortress around yourself, a place where you can find refuge from the storms of life. Another key to overcoming in this spiritual battle is to immerse yourself in my word. The Bible is not just a book but a powerful tool that equips you with truth. The enemy is the father of lies, and he will try to deceive you in many ways, but my word is truth, and it will set you free. Study my word, meditate on it, and let it guide your thoughts and actions. When you stand on the truth of my word, the lies of the enemy lose their power over you. I also want you to know that this battle is not yours to fight alone. I am with you, and I have already secured the victory. But I need you to stand firm in your faith, to trust that I am in control, even when things seem chaotic. There will be times when you feel weak, but it is in those moments that my strength is made perfect. Do not rely on your own understanding or ability, but lean on me, and I will give you the strength to overcome. The enemy may try to attack your finances, your health, your relationships, but know that I am your provider, healer, and protector. When you feel under attack, declare my promises over your life. Speak life, not death, speak blessings, not curses. Your words have power, and when you align them with my word, you release my power into your situation. Remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, for I am with you, and I will see you through. If you believe that I am fighting your battles and that you are victorious in me, right, I am victorious through God's strength. My dear child, I know the desires of your heart, and I see the relationships you have built in your life. While companionship and friendship are gifts, I must warn you to be discerning about the people you allow close to you. Not everyone who smiles at you has your best interest at heart. Some may carry envy, bitterness, or malice in their hearts, and their intentions may not align with my plans for you. It is crucial that you remain vigilant and seek my guidance in all your relationships. There are those who may appear supportive, but beneath the surface, they harbor ill intentions. They may speak sweetly to your face but plot against you in the shadows. These are the ones who seek to tear down what you have built, to disrupt the peace I have given you. I urge you to pay attention to the signs I send you, to the unease you may feel around certain individuals. This is my spirit alerting you to the danger they represent. It is important to surround yourself with people who uplift you, who encourage you in your walk with me. 
seek out friendships that are rooted in love, trust, and faith. These are the relationships that will strengthen you, that will help you grow in your spiritual journey. When you build your life around such people, you create a support system that reflects my love and helps you stay on the path I have set before you. Do not be afraid to distance yourself from those who bring negativity, who lead you into temptation, or who drain your energy. It may be difficult to let go of certain relationships, especially if they have been part of your life for a long time. But remember, I have a greater plan for you, and sometimes that requires pruning away what no longer serves your growth. Trust that I will bring the right people into your life, those who will walk with you in faith and love. In your relationships, always seek my wisdom. Ask me to reveal the true intentions of those around you, and I will guide you. When you lean on me for discernment, I will protect you from those who seek to harm you. Remember, I am your closest friend, the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. In me, you will find the perfect example of love, loyalty, and trust. Let me be the standard by which you measure all your relationships. If you believe that I will guide you in your relationships and protect you from those with ill intentions, write, God is my guide and protector in all my relationships. My beloved child, the key to a life of peace and fulfillment lies in your connection with me. This connection is nurtured and strengthened through faith and prayer. When you place your faith in me, you anchor yourself to a foundation that cannot be shaken, no matter what storms may come your way. Faith is not just a belief in my existence, but a deep trust in my goodness, my power, and my love for you. Prayer is the lifeline that keeps your faith strong. It is through prayer that you communicate with me, sharing your heart and listening for my guidance. I invite you to make prayer a central part of your life, not as a ritual, but as a genuine conversation with your Heavenly Father. When you pray, you align your spirit with mine, and in that alignment, you find clarity, peace, and strength. In your prayers, do not be afraid to pour out your heart to me. I am here to listen, to comfort, and to guide you. Whether you are filled with joy or burdened with sorrow, bring it all to me. There is nothing too big or too small for me to handle. Your prayers are not just words, they are powerful expressions of your faith. Through prayer, you invite my power to work in your life, to bring healing, provision, and protection. Faith and prayer go hand in hand. As you pray, your faith grows stronger, and as your faith grows, your prayers become more powerful. Even when you cannot see the answers right away, trust that I am working on your behalf. Sometimes, the answers come in ways you do not expect, but always for your good. Trust in my timing, for I know what is best for you. I encourage you to build a daily habit of prayer, to set aside time each day to connect with me. Let this time be a sacred moment where you can quiet your mind, open your heart, and feel my presence. As you do this, you will find that your worries begin to fade, your fears diminish, and your spirit is renewed. Prayer is the breath of your soul, without it, your faith can wither. But with it, you will thrive, even in the midst of challenges. If you believe that prayer and faith are your keys to a life of peace and strength, write, my faith is strong, and I am connected to God through prayer. My dear child, I want to fill your heart with hope today. The world may seem full of darkness, uncertainty, and despair, but remember that I am the light that shines in the darkness. No matter how bleak things may appear, there is always hope because I am with you. I have great plans for your life, plans to prosper you and give you a future filled with peace and joy. Hold on to this hope, for it is the anchor of your soul. 
Hope is not just wishful thinking, it is the confident expectation of good because you trust in me. Even when circumstances seem overwhelming, know that I am working behind the scenes to bring about my perfect will in your life. Every challenge you face is an opportunity for growth, every trial a chance to deepen your faith. I use all things for your good, even the difficult and painful experiences. Trust that I am refining you, molding you into the person I created you to be. In times of despair, I want you to remember my promises. I have promised never to leave you nor forsake you. I have promised to provide for your every need, to give you strength when you are weak, and to guide you when you feel lost. These promises are not just words, they are the foundation upon which you can build your life. When you hold on to my promises, you will find that hope begins to rise within you, dispelling the darkness. There is great power in hope. It lifts your eyes above your circumstances and focuses them on me, your source of life and strength. Hope gives you the courage to keep going, even when the road is hard. It reminds you that the story is not over, that I am still at work, and that better days are ahead. Let this hope sustain you through the trials, and let it fill you with joy, knowing that I am in control and that my plans for you are good. I also want you to share this hope with others. There are many around you who are struggling, who feel lost and alone. Be a beacon of hope to them, showing them the love and compassion that I have shown you. Your words and actions can make a difference, bringing light to those who are in darkness. As you spread hope, you will find that it multiplies in your own life, filling you with even greater peace and joy. If you believe that hope in God is your anchor in all circumstances, write, My hope is in the Lord, who guides my steps and lights my path. My beloved child, your heart is a precious treasure, the wellspring of your life. It is the place where my spirit dwells, where your deepest thoughts and desires reside. This is why it is so important to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. The enemy knows the power of your heart, and he will do everything he can to infiltrate it with doubt, fear, envy, and despair. But I am here to help you protect this sacred space. Guarding your heart begins with what you allow to enter it. Be mindful of the words you listen to, the images you see, and the thoughts you entertain. These are the gateways to your heart, and what you allow through these gates will take root and grow. Surround yourself with my word, with positive and uplifting influences, and with people who encourage and support you. This will create a strong defense against the negative influences that seek to invade your heart. Your thoughts are powerful, my child, and they have a direct impact on your heart. What you meditate on will shape your emotions, your attitudes, and ultimately, your actions. This is why I urge you to think on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. When you focus your mind on these things, you build a fortress around your heart that the enemy cannot penetrate. Your thoughts are the seeds that grow in the soil of your heart, so choose them wisely. Prayer is another vital way to guard your heart. In prayer, you invite me into your innermost being, allowing my presence to fill and protect your heart. As you pour out your worries, fears, and anxieties to me, I will replace them with my peace, which surpasses all understanding. This peace will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, keeping you centered and grounded in my love, no matter what storms may rage around you. I also want you to be aware of the power of forgiveness in guarding your heart. When you hold on to bitterness, anger, or resentment, you allow these emotions to take root in your heart, creating an opening for the enemy to attack. But when you choose to forgive, 
you close that door and protect your heart from further harm. Forgiveness is not just about freeing the other person, it is about freeing yourself and safeguarding your heart from the destructive power of unforgiveness. Finally, remember that I am your greatest protector. When you trust in me and rely on my strength, I will guard your heart as you walk through this life. No matter what comes your way, I will be your shield, your refuge, and your fortress. Lean on me, and let my love be the protective covering over your heart, keeping it safe from all harm. If you believe that God is guarding your heart and keeping it safe, right, God is my shield, and my heart is protected by his love. My precious child, fear is one of the most powerful weapons the enemy uses against you. It can paralyze you, cloud your judgment, and prevent you from stepping into the fullness of what I have for you. But I want you to know that fear has no place in the heart of my child. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When fear tries to take hold of you, I want you to confront it with faith. Faith is the antidote to fear. It is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. When you place your faith in me, you are declaring that I am greater than any fear, any obstacle, any challenge you may face. Faith is not the absence of fear, but the choice to trust me in the midst of it. It is the courage to step forward, even when you cannot see the whole path, knowing that I am guiding your every step. To overcome fear, you must first identify it. Fear often disguises itself as worry, anxiety, or doubt. It whispers lies into your heart, telling you that you are not enough, that you will fail, or that something terrible is about to happen. But these are not my words, they are the enemies. I want you to recognize these lies for what they are and replace them with my truth. My truth says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are more than a conqueror through Christ, and that I am with you always. When fear tries to overwhelm you, turn to my word. The scriptures are filled with promises that counteract every fear you may have. Do not fear, for I am with you, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let these words sink deep into your heart, and let them be the anchor that holds you steady in the storm. Prayer is another powerful tool in overcoming fear. When you feel fear rising within you, bring it to me in prayer. Lay it at my feet, and I will replace it with my peace. There is nothing too big or too small for me to handle. As you pray, you are not only releasing your fears to me, but you are also inviting my presence into your situation. And where I am, fear cannot remain. Finally, take action. Fear often keeps you stuck, but faith moves you forward. Take small steps of faith, even when you are afraid. Each step you take in faith diminishes the power of fear over you. Trust that I am guiding you, and that I have a plan for your life that is good and full of hope. As you walk in faith, you will find that fear loses its grip on you, and you will begin to experience the freedom and joy that comes from living in my perfect love. If you believe that faith will help you overcome fear, write, I walk by faith, not by fear, because God is with me. My dear child, Forgiveness is one of the most powerful acts you can perform, both for yourself and for others. It is a reflection of my love and grace, and it is essential for your spiritual well-being. When you forgive, you are not only releasing the person who has wronged you, but you are also setting yourself free from the chains of bitterness, anger, and resentment that can weigh down your soul. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting the hurt or pretending that the offense never happened. 
It means choosing to let go of the desire for revenge or retribution and entrusting the situation to me. I am the righteous judge, and I see all things. I know the pain you have endured, and I am with you in it. But I ask you to release that pain to me, to let go of the burden that unforgiveness places on your heart. When you hold on to unforgiveness, it becomes a poison that slowly erodes your joy, peace, and even your health. It creates a barrier between you and others, and even between you and me. But when you choose to forgive, you tear down that barrier and open the door for my healing and restoration to flow into your life. Forgiveness is a choice, and it is one that I ask you to make, not just for the sake of the other person, but for your own well-being. I know that forgiveness can be difficult, especially when the wound is deep and the pain is great. But I want you to remember that I have forgiven you of all your sins, even when you did not deserve it. My grace is sufficient for you, and it is through my grace that you can extend forgiveness to others. When you forgive, you are reflecting my heart, and you are living out the love that I have poured into you. Forgiveness is also a powerful weapon against the enemy. The enemy thrives on division, strife, and bitterness. But when you forgive, you take away his power over you. You disarm him and prevent him from using that offense to create further harm in your life. Forgiveness is an act of spiritual warfare, and it is one that brings victory and freedom. Finally, I want you to understand that forgiveness is a process. It may not happen all at once, and that is okay. But each step you take toward forgiveness is a step toward healing and wholeness. Trust me to guide you through this process, and know that I am with you every step of the way. As you forgive, you will find that your heart becomes lighter, your spirit becomes freer, and your relationship with me becomes deeper. If you believe in the power of forgiveness and are ready to release any burden of unforgiveness, write, I choose to forgive and let God's love heal my heart. My beloved child, I desire for you to live in peace, a peace that transcends all understanding, a peace that guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This peace is not dependent on your circumstances, it is rooted in your relationship with me. When you stay close to me, when you trust in my promises, and when you allow my spirit to guide you, you will experience a peace that the world cannot give. Living in my peace begins with trusting in my sovereignty. I am in control of all things, and nothing happens in your life without my knowledge and permission. When you trust that I am working all things together for your good, you can rest in my peace, even when life seems chaotic or uncertain. Trusting me means letting go of the need to control everything and surrendering your worries, fears, and anxieties to me. Prayer is a powerful way to cultivate peace in your life. When you bring your concerns to me in prayer, you are inviting my peace to replace your anxiety. I want you to cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. As you pray, let my peace fill your heart and mind, calming your spirit and giving you the strength to face whatever comes your way. Prayer is not just about asking for things, it is about connecting with me and allowing my peace to wash over you. Another key to living in my peace is to keep your mind focused on what is good, true, and praiseworthy. The world is full of distractions and negativity, but I want you to fix your thoughts on things that bring life and joy. Meditate on my word, fill your mind with my promises, and let my truth guide your thinking. When your mind is filled with my truth, my peace will naturally follow. I also encourage you to cultivate a heart of gratitude. Gratitude is a powerful antidote to anxiety and stress. When you focus on what you have, rather than what you lack, you open the door for my peace to enter your heart. Take time each day to thank me for the blessings in your life, 
both big and small. As you do, you will find that your heart becomes lighter, and my peace becomes more evident in your life. Finally, remember that my peace is a gift that I freely give to you. It is not something you have to earn or strive for. Simply receive it by faith. Let go of the things that rob you of your peace, worry, fear, doubt, and embrace the peace that I offer you. My peace is a reflection of my love for you, and it is a gift that will sustain you through every season of life. If you believe in God's peace and want to live in it daily, right, I receive God's peace and let it guard my heart and mind. My dear child, I know that there are times when life becomes overwhelming, when the weight of your troubles feels too heavy to bear. In those moments, I want you to remember that I am your strength. I am your refuge and your fortress, an ever-present help in times of trouble. You do not have to carry the burden alone, for I am with you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In times of trouble, it is natural to feel weak and weary, but I want you to know that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you feel that you cannot go on, that is when my power can work most effectively in your life. I am the source of your strength, and I am ready to give you the power you need to overcome every challenge you face. Lean on me, and let my strength carry you through. The key to accessing my strength is to remain connected to me. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit unless it remains connected to the vine, you cannot thrive unless you remain in me. Spend time in my presence, draw near to me in prayer, and let my word be the source of your encouragement and strength. As you stay close to me, you will find that your strength is renewed, and you will have the endurance to keep going. I also want you to remember that you are never alone in your troubles. I am always with you, and I have also placed people in your life who can support and encourage you. Do not be afraid to reach out to others for help, for I have created you to be part of a community. When you share your burdens with others, you allow them to help carry the load, and you open the door for my strength to flow through them to you. In times of trouble, it is important to keep your eyes fixed on me. The enemy will try to distract you with fear, doubt, and despair, but I want you to focus on my promises. I have promised to be with you, to strengthen you, and to deliver you from every trouble. Hold on to these promises, and let them be the anchor that keeps you steady in the storm. I am faithful, and I will see you through. Finally, know that every trial you face is an opportunity for growth. I am using these challenges to refine you, to strengthen your faith, and to draw you closer to me. Do not be discouraged by the difficulties you encounter, but rather see them as opportunities to experience my strength in a new and deeper way. I am with you, my child, and together we will overcome every obstacle. If you believe that God is your strength in times of trouble, right? God is my strength and refuge, and I trust in His power. My beloved child, there is immense power in your praise. When you lift your voice to honor and glorify me, something profound happens in the spiritual realm. Praise is not just a response to my goodness, it is a weapon that breaks chains, silences the enemy, and brings you into my presence. No matter what you are facing, Praise has the power to shift the atmosphere and change your circumstances. When you praise me, you acknowledge my sovereignty over every situation in your life. You declare that I am greater than your problems, that I am in control, and that my will is perfect. Praise lifts your eyes from the difficulties around you and fixes them on me, the source of your strength and hope. In praising me, you shift your focus from what is wrong to the one who can make everything right. Even in the darkest times, I want you to find reasons to praise me. Praise is an act of faith, 
it is declaring my goodness even when you cannot yet see it. It is a way of saying, I trust you, Lord, no matter what. This kind of praise is powerful because it is rooted in faith and trust, not in circumstances. When you choose to praise me in the midst of your trials, you invite my presence into your situation, and where I am, miracles can happen. Praise also has the power to bring you joy and peace. As you praise me, my spirit fills you with joy, joy that is not dependent on external circumstances but comes from knowing that you are loved, protected, and cared for by me. This joy strengthens you, giving you the courage to face whatever comes your way. My peace, which surpasses all understanding, also fills your heart as you praise, calming your fears and anxieties. I want you to understand that praise is not just about singing songs or saying the right words, it is about a heart posture of gratitude and worship. It is about recognizing my hand in every aspect of your life and giving thanks for my blessings, even the small ones. When you live a life of praise, you create an atmosphere of heaven on earth. My presence dwells in the praises of my people, and as you cultivate a lifestyle of praise, you will find that my presence becomes more tangible in your life. Finally, I want you to use praise as a tool for spiritual warfare. The enemy cannot stand in the presence of your praise. When you praise me, you remind him of his defeat and my victory. Your praise confounds the enemy, silences his lies, and breaks the chains he tries to place on you. So, when you feel attacked or oppressed, lift up your voice in praise, and watch as the enemy flees. If you believe in the power of praise and want to use it to bring God's presence into your life, write, I will praise God in all circumstances, and His presence will fill my life. My dear child, I know that waiting is not always easy. There are times when you pray, and it seems like the answers are delayed or even denied. But I want you to know that my timing is always perfect. I see the whole picture, from beginning to end, and I am working all things together for your good, even when you cannot see it. Trusting my timing is an act of faith, one that will bring you peace and joy as you rest in my sovereignty. There are moments in life when it feels like nothing is happening, when you are in a season of waiting. But I want you to understand that these seasons are not wasted. They are times of preparation, times when I am working behind the scenes to align everything according to my perfect will. Just as a seed must be buried in the soil before it can grow, so too must you sometimes wait in the quiet and hidden places before you see the fruit of your prayers. I am not slow in keeping my promises, my child. I am not indifferent to your needs or unaware of your desires. Every prayer you have prayed, every tear you have shed, is precious to me, and I am moving on your behalf. But there are things that must happen in the spiritual realm, preparations that must be made, and lessons that must be learned before the answers can manifest in your life. Trust that my timing is perfect, and that I am never late. During the waiting season, I want you to focus on me, not on the clock. Do not let impatience or frustration take root in your heart. Instead, use this time to draw closer to me, to deepen your relationship with me, and to grow in faith and character. The waiting time is not a passive time, it is a time of active faith, where you continue to trust, hope, and believe in my goodness, even when the answers seem delayed. I also want you to understand that sometimes my answer is, not yet, because I have something better in store for you. What you may perceive as a delay or denial is often my way of protecting you or preparing you for something greater than you could imagine. Trust that I know what is best for you, and that I am working in your life with your best interests at heart. My plans for you are good, 
plans to prosper you and give you hope and a future. Finally, remember that my timing is not like yours. A day is like a thousand years to me, and a thousand years like a day. What may seem like a long wait to you is but a moment in my eternal plan. Do not lose heart, but continue to trust in my perfect timing. When the time is right, I will act swiftly, and you will see the fulfillment of my promises in your life. Until then, rest in my peace and trust that I am in control. If you believe in God's perfect timing and want to trust Him fully, right, I trust in God's timing, and I know He is working all things for my good. My beloved child, I see the weight of discouragement that has been pressing down on you. I know the thoughts that run through your mind, the doubts that creep in, and the feelings of inadequacy that try to overwhelm you. But I want you to know that I am with you in every moment of discouragement, and I am here to lift you up, to strengthen you, and to renew your hope. You are not alone, and your discouragement does not define you. Discouragement often comes when expectations are not met, when the journey is harder than anticipated, or when you feel that your efforts are in vain. But I want you to remember that your worth is not measured by your achievements or by the approval of others. Your worth is found in me, and I have called you my own. I have chosen you, and I love you with an everlasting love. Do not let the lies of discouragement take root in your heart, for they are not from me. When you feel discouraged, I want you to turn to me. Pour out your heart to me, tell me your fears, your frustrations, and your doubts. I am here to listen, to comfort, and to remind you of who you are in me. My spirit is within you, and he will give you the strength you need to rise above the discouragement. Do not carry this burden alone, give it to me, and I will replace it with my peace. I also want you to speak my truth over your life. The enemy uses discouragement to try to silence you, to make you forget my promises and lose sight of my purpose for you. But my word is a weapon against discouragement. Declare my promises over your life, speak my truth into your situation, and let my word be the light that guides you out of the darkness of discouragement. You are more than a conqueror through Christ, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Surround yourself with encouragement. Seek out those who will speak life into you, who will pray with you and remind you of my faithfulness. Do not isolate yourself when you are discouraged, for that is when the enemy tries to attack you the most. Instead, draw near to those who will uplift you, who will stand with you in faith, and who will help you see the truth of my love and power. Together, you can overcome the discouragement that tries to pull you down. Finally, I want you to remember that discouragement is temporary, but my love and my promises are eternal. The difficulties you face now are but a momentary affliction compared to the glory that is being prepared for you. Do not lose heart, my child. Keep your eyes on me, and trust that I am working in ways you cannot yet see. I am with you, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Your future is bright, and I have great things in store for you. If you believe that God will help you overcome discouragement, right, I am strong in God's love, and He will lift me up above all discouragement. My precious child, my grace is sufficient for you. It is by my grace that you are saved, that you are sustained, and that you are empowered to live the life I have called you to live. My grace is not something you can earn, it is a gift that I freely give to you out of my love. I want you to embrace my grace fully, to let it wash over you, and to allow it to transform every area of your life. Grace is my unmerited favor, my kindness towards you, even when you feel unworthy. It is by grace that you have been forgiven, that your sins have been washed away, 
and that you have been given new life in me. There is nothing you can do to make me love you more, and there is nothing you can do to make me love you less. My love for you is constant, and my grace is the expression of that love. When you stumble and fall, when you make mistakes or feel like you have failed, I want you to remember my grace. Do not let shame or guilt keep you from coming to me. My grace is greater than your failures, and it is always available to you. Come to me, confess your sins, and receive my forgiveness. I do not hold your past against you, I have cast your sins into the depths of the sea, and I remember them no more. My grace is also the power you need to overcome the challenges in your life. It is not just forgiveness, it is empowerment. My grace enables you to do what you cannot do on your own. When you feel weak, when the task ahead seems impossible, lean on my grace. It is sufficient for you, and it will give you the strength to persevere. My grace is made perfect in your weakness, and it will carry you through every trial. I want you to extend this grace to others as well. Just as I have forgiven you, I ask you to forgive those who have wronged you. Just as I have shown you kindness and mercy, I ask you to show the same to others. When you live in my grace, you become a vessel of my love to the world. You reflect my heart, and you bring healing and hope to those around you. Finally, I want you to live in the freedom that my grace provides. You are no longer bound by the law, you are free in my grace. This does not mean you live recklessly, but that you live joyfully, knowing that you are loved, forgiven, and empowered by me. Let my grace be the foundation of your life, and let it lead you into the abundant life that I have prepared for you. If you believe in the power of God's grace and want to live fully in it, right, I am embraced by God's grace, and I live in His love and freedom. My dear child, I have created you with a unique purpose, a divine destiny that only you can fulfill. Your life is not an accident, and every experience, every talent, and every passion has been woven together to prepare you for the purpose I have for you. I want you to walk confidently in that purpose, knowing that I am with you, guiding you every step of the way. Discovering your purpose begins with knowing me. The closer you walk with me, the clearer your purpose will become. I have placed desires and dreams in your heart for a reason. They are clues to the path I have prepared for you. Seek me first, and as you do, I will reveal my plans for you. Do not be afraid to dream big, for I am a god of the impossible, and nothing is too hard for me. As you walk in your purpose, you will face challenges and obstacles. But I want you to remember that I have equipped you with everything you need to fulfill your purpose. The gifts, talents, and abilities I have given you are not by accident, they are tools to accomplish the work I have called you to do. When you use what I have given you, you will see my power at work in your life in ways that will astonish you. Walking in purpose also means being obedient to my leading. There will be times when I ask you to step out in faith, to go where you have never gone before, or to do things that seem beyond your ability. But remember, where I guide, I provide. I will never ask you to do something without giving you the grace and strength to do it. Trust me, and take that step of faith. As you do, you will see doors open, opportunities arise, and my favor rest upon you. I want you to understand that your purpose is not just about what you do, but about who you are becoming. I am more interested in your character than your achievements. As you walk in your purpose, allow me to shape you, to mold you into the person I created you to be. Let your life be a reflection of my love, my grace, and my truth. As you do, you will fulfill your purpose not just through your actions, 
but through your very being. Finally, I want you to know that your purpose is part of a larger plan. You are not alone in this journey, you are part of my body, the Church. Your purpose is interconnected with the purposes of others, and together, you will accomplish great things for my kingdom. Support, encourage, and love one another as you walk in your purpose, and you will see my glory revealed in ways you never imagined. If you believe that God has a unique purpose for your life and are ready to walk in it, right, I am walking in God's purpose, and I trust His plan for my life.